Hi everyone, um, welcome to your first tutorial. We are going to take a look at the terminal and how it works, a little bit about how to move around in it and what you can do. Very basic stuff um, and we'll get through it together. So you, I hope that you've already downloaded Git Bash or Git and if you haven't, that's what you should go ahead and do. When you've done that, you go ahead and open Git Bash. Now, this is what the terminal git bash looks like. Part over here before the at is your username. And this part after that is the name of your computer. Now, I'm going to open up this part as well as a corresponding file explorer because what we're going to do today is we're going to just navigate and look at files and folders in this one and see how this and this essentially is the same thing. So let's see. LS is a command that you type in and then you press enter and it shows you everything that is in this folder. Now, what folder are we in, you might wonder. If you look over here, you see that there is a character. Um, it means that you're in the home folder or home directory. Uh, that character is tilde and you use it a fair amount uh, when programming. So where are we? If we go into this PC, the hard drive we are at, and we go to users and we go over here, you will now start to see some interesting things. We have documents, desktop, downloads. We have documents, desktop, downloads. So as you can see, this here and this here, same thing, exactly the same thing. We're now going to try another uh, command. And that command is, I have a little cheat sheet again. Um, next to me. So if I glance over to my right, that's what I'm doing. Now we have this command PWD. What this does, it shows you the directory you're currently in. So if you've read the PDF and looked at the slide, um, you will know that uh, and looked at the video, you will know that um, you're always somewhere in the tree hierarchical structure uh, of your computer. And right now we are standing in C, the C drive, slash users, slash Ciroc, which is my user. Now, if we want to go uh, into a folder, deeper into the tree structure, uh, we type in CD, which stands for change directory. Remember, directory means folder. So CD, for example, desktop. Now we're in the desktop. Now let's take a look. What's in the desktop? There's stuff and something called desktop.ini. Now stuff is a folder. If you look at um, the colors over here, saved games, uh, pictures, OneDrive, etc. You will see that they correspond with folders that you can go into. Stuff is a folder. Um, sometimes when you go into different uh, folders in the terminal, you will see strange files that is kind of difficult to give you a blanket explanation of what they are. Sometimes you can't see them when you're working in your Explorer uh, with a visual uh, GUI but you can see them in the terminal. Now, I don't know what this does. And this is something that is really good to Google, check out uh, if you want to know um, what they do, but it will be impossible for you to understand what every single file does on your computer. And again, difficult to do a whole blanket explanation of this is always this because it, it varies. It varies between operating systems. It varies, depends on which folder you're in. So um, this is where the learning uh, comes in, start, trying to understand your computer and how it actually works. But okay, we have managed to go into the desktop. Now, what do we do if we want to go back? Maybe we can type in CD, change directory. And to go back, you actually just type two dots 
and you press enter. And now you can see that we are back to where we were. All right. Uh, if we want to, for example, start a program or maybe um, open a file, you just type in the name of the file while standing in the folder it's in. I'll show, show you what I mean. So if we go into desktop, let's, this is something that can get a bit annoying. Um, let's see. I think you see it better there. Uh, check out what you have here and then you go into stuff. What do we have here? Well, we have two images, two JPEGs. So we can actually type start. And it opens up our picture. Forgive the puns, I need to have some fun while doing these things, right? So that's how you start or open a file. You go to the area where it is, the folder it is, and you um, type the name of the file or the program. Now, sometimes you need the word start before, sometimes you just need to type in um, the program. Again, I'm going to show you what I mean. I have a little cheat sheet to the side here. So give me one second. We're going to open a program you're going to be very well uh, acquainted with quite soon, which is VS Code. And we're going to do it doing, using this. So let's open VS Code using the terminal. First, we need to know where it is. So we can go to VS Code or any uh, executable program and open file location. Now this is just a shortcut. This won't do anything. So once again, we right click and we open file location. Now here it is. So if I double click on this, a program starts up. So what we need to do is we need to navigate into this directory, into this folder and start this program. So how do we do that? We can actually copy this here, which is the path, the location of this folder, and we can paste it into here. Let's see, what? remember change directory, but wait, that didn't work. Now, why didn't that work? Well, you see over here, there is a space and terminals usually don't do great with spaces. They get confused. And the reason for that is that um, oftentimes spaces means that you type in a new name or a new command. It, it's, it's a new something. So here it gets confused because it thinks that it's something new where it, it, in fact it's, it's not. So how do we go around that? We do that by putting it into quotation marks. And now you can see that we've successfully navigated into this folder. So here, ls, show us uh, what's in here. You can see that we have uh, code.exe. So, There you go. You see that you can start by typing in start code.exe. Like I said, sometimes it's enough to just type the name of the program you want to start. Sometimes you need to add start beforehand. So it really depends. Okay. So let's take a look about how to look into files as well using git bash. So starting git bash here. Where are we? We are in the home directory. Let's go into desktop again. 
and now we see that there is a hello.txt file over here. Yes, I added it before, between ed edits. Yes. So, cat hello.txt. And you see what it contains. So, let's let's take a look. Hello. It is the same indeed. Awesome. So, so that we learn kind of a little bit how to work with this faster. If you want to repeat commands that you've already typed in, you can press the up arrow and it will cycle through all the commands you have previously written. Um, so for example, CD desktop, here we go. Again, you can just scroll through them using up and down arrow keys. Another good thing to uh, do is if you are in a directory, let's make this smaller so you can see better. There we go. If you're in a directory and you want to go somewhere, you can type in CD. It won't let me do anything right now. So I did something wrong, clearly. There we go. Something went crazy. Ignore that. If something like this happens to you, you can press control and C at the same time, and it will stop doing whatever it's doing. And you go back to the safe spot where you're in a directory. Now, again, if you want to um, go into a new directory, you can actually press CD and then tab twice and it will show you everything that you can CD or anything that you can see in this directory. So let's do stuff. Now you can also start uh, whichever folder you want to go into, start typing it. And once you typed something, you can press tab and it will autocomplete. There we go. If you have two things, say that I would have start and stuff, so if I did then type in ST and click on tab or press tab, it will show me both. So it will only autocomplete the full name if that's original. Um, Let's go back up. Now, wherever you are, you can always find out by typing in PWD, that is the print working directory. You can go all the way back to To your C drive or drive really you can go as far back as you want but here we start getting into um, the back rooms <laughs> of the uh, of the computer so let's just type in CD and tilde once more and we're back in the home directory so play around um, Try to move back and forth, see where you are, type in LS all the time to kind of understand where you are. And remember, you are always in the same in the same area as you are over here. It's just that here it's text and here it's visually represented with icons and you can move your mouse. Um, and that's only the, the real only difference. I want to show you something more before we, we leave this tutorial, and that is the terminal for Windows. Um, again, sorry Mac users, but it's hard to, to be an expert in all the OSs. Um, the teachers at school uh, are a bit 50-50, so you'll get your, Macs, you'll get your Mac OS stuff uh, a bit later. So. In the course, I have suggested that people who use Windows download the terminal, and I'm going to show you why and how to do it. So if you go into Microsoft Store, have a sip of tea or something, I don't know. Here we go. And you can search for terminal. I have accidentally pressed my caps lock, cap lock, caps lock. 
not the movie, this one, Windows Terminal. You install this, and I'm gonna show you why it's so awesome. You open it up, I actually have it here, so let's do that. Let's go to Terminal. There we go. And here, you can actually open Git Bash, you can open Command Prompt, you can open PowerShell, and you can have all of these open at the same time and work in all of them independently. So if I do something here, like I go LS, that is not the same as being here and, and uh, going into something here. Let's see, let's go CD downloads, don't judge me, whatever it is in there. There we go. Now, as you can see, being here and being here, totally different. So this is what you can do in the terminal. Um, because I also enjoy doing stuff visually that is pleasing, you can even go into settings and you can decide what you want your terminal to look like. Um, however you want. And that's fun for me, <laughs> at least. I like to cutify anything uh, computer science because this should be fun. And this to me is more fun than looking at um, something like from the matrix. However much I love that movie. <laughs> um, so the terminal is really great. I have linked a um, video on why it's so great as well. Uh, highly recommend it. I also want to show you a little bit uh, what you can do in regards to creating, destroying files, moving them around, because you can do all of that in um, the terminal as well. Now, it's really important to th remember that programmers don't usually remember all of these things uh, by heart. I mean, of course, if you use these things on a daily basis or very often, you're going to remember commands, but that's not really um, super important for a programmer to do. What's important is to know what you can do and know how to find it or look for it. So you can Google pretty much anything. So let's see here. Let's start up Git Bash and I wanna know how to create a file. So let's just open up Google and create text file Git Bash. How can I make a text file in Git Bash? Here we go. There are many ways to create a file using Bash, using Touch, and then something only creates. Well, let's let's try that. Let's copy this and paste this in. And as you can see, nothing happened. And the reason that is is because I am in my home directory, and that happens quite a lot that you open Git Bash and you forget where you are in the structure. So let's navigate to where we should be, which is the desktop for this pre uh, presentation, this exercise. Okay, so let's try it again. Now I'm gonna use my arrow key to navigate to the correct command. Let's try this again. Oh, and there it is. Awesome, okay. Uh, now I want to remove this. Now, I could Google all of this, but that's just going to take a lot of time. So I made a little cheat sheet and I am going to share this cheat sheet with you as well. So let's go through this cheat sheet together. First of all, always remember to uh, navigate towards the directory where you want to be. Let's be in the desktop for simplicity. So CD go and we are in the desktop okay so let us just create a text file so create a file and we type in touch and the name and the extension so let's call it hi dot txt boom there it is okay then let's just make this a bit now let's remove this and type in rm remove and again the file name and extension. So if I start typing it and press tab, it will autocomplete for me. And it's gone. Now you can actually 
create and start writing into a text file um, using something called cat, which stands for concatenate. So let's let's try it. Let's follow this here. So cat and then an arrow and then file name dot extension. So hello dot txt. Now it's waiting for me to type something. So I'm going to type in hi student enter and now it's waiting for me again to keep going but i am going to uh, press Control and c and stop typing in so let's see hi student it worked okay but let's rename this hello to hi student so to rename you actually use the same command as to move but the computer understands it as overwriting an old file with a new file so just go with it so we type in mb and the old extension name which is hello text and we want it to be called hi student dot txt and it renamed it now let's move it into stuff right here. And we just do the same thing. We type in MB. And now we type in the file name, hi student. And now we type in where we want it to go. So we type in stuff. There we go. And it is hi student, hi student. There we go. This is from an old recording that I had to redo, so ignore that. Okay, now let's go through some stuff you can do with directories or folders. So let's start off by creating a directory. So you type in mkdir, which stands for make dir, make directory. A lot of these uh, commands stem from something logical, it's just that they're abbreviated so you don't always understand what they mean and let's call it name because it's simple and there we have a new directory now let's let's rename it uh, we'll skip to uh, destroy at the very end so let, let's rename it over here so we will do the same thing override it by moving it and we'll type in the name and we'll call it what should we call it there. Directory. Directory is probably simpler. Now the directory is called directory. So let's move it into stuff. You just type in MW, MV name, which is directory. And you type in <laughs> the directory you want it to go into. So we're going to type in stuff. Let's see, has it moved in there? Indeed it has, an empty directory. So let's now remove this directory from here. So first what we need to do is we need to navigate into stuff. So let's type in C and S and move into stuff. Is it here? Let's see. Directory, directory, there it is. Now, what we need to do to remove it is type in this. So we're gonna type in RM dash R and then the directory name, which happens to be directory. There we go. So if we check here, it's not here anymore. And if we take a look here, it is indeed gone. So that's just some of the stuff you can do here. And there's tons more. Um, and you can look up online all the things you can do. Once again, not something that you should remember. Just good to know that you can do these things. But uh, have fun with it. 
I think that is all for now. Um, good job getting through this and uh, play around. Have a look. Don't be scared to go into things, to try things out. Um, there's not much harm you can do right now. So just, just try to get comfortable in working with this, uh, this type of text-based terminal. Good luck.